looking for your Excel and Mac Tada, you click on it then you see this okay Excel you just click on an Excel workbook now let's uh, look at we choose a cell okay I always have a space on top and space at the side so that it's easier to add stuff later now if you look at our table here you have U okay slash with the CM okay the next one is V slash with CM All right then one over U okay slash CM to the power of minus one okay then again one over V CM to the power of minus one so obviously this power minus one is very very ugly so you can highlight it okay now to have a superscript you right click for Mac uh, those of you who have not yet activated your double tap uh, you should do it in the, you know how to do it anyone double tap so you can get right click if not you press control in your mouse yeah so you go to format cells then over here you do superscript I mean click OK you should jump up all right do the same for the other one just highlight it okay right click format cells superscript click on now you key in the values 0 0.0 14.0 okay now we all know that in physics you uh, you have to actually be very particular about the number of decimal places so since you have used the ruler the precision is 0 0.1 cm right so in order to change the decimal place you have to highlight the whole row right click format cells again and then you go to number it's always by by default general so you go to number all right and then you can decide how many decimal place you want so in this case because it's 0.1 of a cm i just stick to one decimal place and then you click okay then everything should appear automatically these values because we are using excel need not be calculated one by one using a calculator all you need to do is use this equal sign which is very uh, powerful in excel you just put equal all right and then you know that it is inverse so 1 divide by u so you click on this u and then this will tell you that whatever value is in b4 cell will be placed where you see the the highlight and to get the answer out you press enter or return and now you don't have to do this for every cell you just drag over here you see that little box there your cursor will change to a plus sign you click on it and then you drag it down that will ensure all the formulas are copied next thing equal again 1 over v value enter you get these values all right and then you scroll down then you get this value. now again the issue here is there's too many decimal places so over here all right we look at the first value is three significant figures here's three significant figures and since you're going to have one over the value this is also three sig fig that is also three sig fig so what you do is you look at the value here it is 0 0.0833 right so you want three sig fig so it's actually four decimal place right this one is four decimal place four decimal place four 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 all of them are four let's look at this end here every single one also will be four so you can just highlight the whole cell all right right click go to format cells look for your number and then how many uh, decimal place four click OK all becomes three sig fig let's format the cell I don't like all this like if you print this out it looks very uh, it's just numbers and you know there's no line so we want to line everything up now everything looks great if it's centered so click on highlight on everything and then go to home and then where's the alignment center align center click on it then it jumps to the middle alright and then well it's nice to highlight the top right bold it so you can click on this one bold all right and then if you want to have those lines in the table um, border yeah okay so after you click on this you click inside and you want it on the outside right so this is you click OK then you get all your lines out we want to plot a graph of V 1 over V against 1 over U you highlight these two rows okay don't highlight the one on top, just highlight numbers. Get the 
Oh, sorry, you gotta scroll down. Ah, yeah, scroll it down. Ah, there, sorry. So it's here, sc scatter. You click on scatter, then your plots are there. Alright, what do you do next? This is a unpolished graph. You get rid of the series, you don't need it. Click and then just delete. And this is not a good scale, right? Okay. So what you do is, remember in physics we try to stretch across the whole graph. So this is not good. Why? Because we started from 0, 0. So if you want to change the number and start from the minimum value of, let's take a look at this value, um, 0 0.04. Okay, take note now, that's how you visually see it first. You just click on this, and then over here you can say, format your axis, and you will have the option to decide on your minimum value. So I, I just now I said it's going to be 0 0.04. So we just do that, 0 0.04. And then immediately when you click OK, you see the scale? It, it just jumps. All right, so the scale is pretty good, right? But not good enough because you're using Excel. You want it to be perfect. So can you see the smallest value, 0 0.02? So we click on the axis again, right click, go to format axis, and then you do a minimum of 0 0.02. Put it and OK. Now, we don't want these little boxes. By default, these are set. So what we can do is we just click once on one button or one data port. Now, if you do not, if you over click, uh, it will only highlight one plot. See, you don't want that. So you click outside and then when you want to look for it, just click one time. All of them will be highlighted. All right. Then you go to right click. Okay. I will first format the data series. All right. After that, Look at the marker style. Don't go for automatic. Go for this one here, which is the one that we are familiar with. Now, size 9 is quite big. So we, you know, we can just change it a bit. 3, you want 4, you know, you see which is suitable. I think 4 is about okay. Then you click, so you get your crosses pretty nice. Then after that, let's add the line. Alright, thankfully, you don't have to worry too much. Trend lines are automatic. So, you click on the data again, right click, add trend line. Then you have to choose, you want a linear one or you want a curve. Alright, go for linear. Click OK, you get a straight line there. This is already line of best fit. Now, something is missing. Title is missing. So, what we can do is, you click on the chart. Can you see chart layout appears? Alright, then you just click on that one. And then you have to add in your chart title. It's always uh, often a mistake uh, if you just assume the axis are accurate. So what you need to do is look carefully at your axis and see whether the correct data is the correct thing you want. Select data. Okay. Alright. And then you, you make sure that your values are what your values claim to be. Uh. So over here, your y, y, y values, if you click on your Y values, can you see... It will tell you that this is V. Is this right? V, right? Your Y, yeah. And then if you click on your X values, just double check. It's going to highlight your 1 over U. You understand that? Okay. So, always double check. That's not all. You still got to label your axis. Huh? So, we label here again, layout, chart layout. We label our axis. You got horizontal title and your vertical. Alright. Vertical is 1 over U, right? So, we can just add that in. How do you want to lay, layer it? The one, the best one is, I think, easiest to see is horizontal title. So if you click on this, this will be V1. So what I do is uh, copy. Alright, you can just copy, highlight it. Alright, Command C. Command C to copy. Go into your title here. Okay, highlight it so that you override it. Paste. It jumps there. And do the same for your bottom axis copy all right but you have to go back to here first and then go to horizontal and then title below axis and then just do the same paste these grid lines are all horizontal you want to have more grid lines so what you do is you click on this okay and then you add minor grid lines if you add major you have this which is too wide you want to have more so you add the minor grid lines, so you have nice lines like that, and do the same for the other side. Alright, so it looks like your graph paper. 
Now gradient. Remember last time very he big headache, right? Gradient, you have to draw a triangle, which you will need to do for your IB. Paper 2, question 1. Very often when they ask you, you might have to actually do it manually. So don't forget the method. However, if you actually uh, want to do it in Excel, have your data points uh, selected. Okay. And then you... Trend line. Under options, yeah. Under options here, you display the equation on the chart. That will give you the gradient immediately. Alright, so this is the equation of your graph. Where y equals to minus 0 0.8386, that is your gradient. And the y-intercept is 0 0.0938. So with this, you basically can save it. You can highlight this and then you can label this as your lens practical. Now, instead of doing this twice, three times every practical, what I do is, I click on the tab at the bottom, all right, and I say copy. I will copy it and then I will just create a copy here and put OK. Then I have two, right? But one of them I don't need, right? I will use this for your refraction practical. So I'm going to change this. Alright, so the only thing you have to worry about, right, is your heading and your values. Alright, and the formula, you can change it. But as soon as you change all these values here, your graph will adjust itself. So automatically, everything is automatic. So you just have a collection at the bottom to transfer all this to your report. So imagine you have typed up your report. Okay, so you want to then insert your table. How do you do it? So all you need to do is just highlight this whole thing. All right, you can just right click, you can just copy, and then you can paste it in. Okay, control it, then you get a nice uh, layout. All right, um, next thing, how about your graph? Okay, now the graph uh, will follow the standard where you must fill out the whole entire page. Okay, you have to go down to a new page. All right, and then you can copy and paste again. Now, dragging, I think, is possible. So if you do that, yep, it will go in. All right, and this is a little bit way too small. So you want to increase the size. Okay, you can zoom in. Okay, make it maybe a full page so you can see the whole thing. All right, this is too small, right? So you just drag it down, make it full page. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, jump down. Okay, like that. Alright. 